This section of the lessons on stalling deals with the characteristics of various wing forms and how they affect an aircraft's behavior at the stall. We shall start with a summary of the requirements for stall characteristics laid down by the European Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, and the American Federal Aviation Regulations, or FAR. The rules specify, first, that it must be possible to produce and to correct roll and yaw by unreversed use of aileron and rudder controls up to the time the aeroplane is stalled, and that no abnormal nose-up pitching may occur. The longitudinal control force from the elevators must be positive up to and throughout the stall. In addition, it must be possible to promptly prevent stalling and to recover from a stall by normal use of the controls. For stalls with wings level, the roll occurring between the stall and the completion of the recovery may not exceed approximately 20 degrees. The rules for a stall in the turn are a bit more complex, as a wing drop or roll at the stall is potentially more likely. The action of the aeroplane after the stall may not be so violent or extreme as to make it difficult, with normal piloting skill, to effect a prompt recovery and regain control of the aeroplane. The maximum bank angle that occurs during recovery may not exceed approximately 60 degrees in the original direction of the turn or 30 degrees in the opposite direction for deceleration rates up to one knot per second. If the deceleration is more than one knot per second, these bank angles are increased to 90 and 60 respectively. You have learned that stalling is due to airflow separation, resulting in a loss of lift and an increase in drag that will cause the aircraft to lose height. This is generally true, but there are some aspects of aircraft behaviour and handling at or near the stall which depend significantly on the wing's aerofoil section and plan form. The shape of an aerofoil section will influence the manner in which it stalls. Some sections will stall very suddenly with a marked drop in lift, whilst others have a more gradual approach to the stall, with a less dramatic loss of lift. In general, an aeroplane should not stall too suddenly, and the pilot should have adequate warning of the approach of the stall by means of natural warnings, such as airframe buffet or decreasing control effectiveness. If, however, a particular wing design is likely to stall too abruptly, it will be necessary to provide some sort of artificial pre-stall warning or even a stall prevention device. There are several features of an aerofoil section design that affect behaviour near the stall. First, the radius of the leading edge. A large radius will give a much more gradual stall than a sharper, small radius leading edge. Likewise, a thick section greater camber, particularly near the leading edge, and a forward point of maximum thickness and camber, are all more conducive to a gradual, more gentle stall than the opposite characteristics. These features are more typical of a wing designed for efficient high-speed operation. With a sharper leading edge, a low thickness cord ratio, and an aft maximum thickness and camber, a comparison of the shapes of the two lift curves shows the difference between the profile's stalling characteristics. As well as the wing's aerofoil section, its shape or plan form will also have an effect on how it stalls. On basic conventional wing plan forms, the separation that causes the stall will not occur simultaneously at all points across the wing. On a rectangular wing, separation tends to start at the wing root trailing edge and spread forward and out towards the tip. Since the reduction in lift occurs initially inboard near the C of G, even if it happens on one wing slightly before the other, 
there is little tendency for the aircraft to roll. The aircraft loses height, but remains more or less wings level. As the aircraft stalls, the centre of pressure moves aft, causing the nose to drop, thus reducing the angle of attack. This gives the aircraft a natural tendency towards a recovery from the stall. The separated airflow from the wing root passes over the fuselage and tail unit, and the aerodynamic buffet caused by it can provide a warning of the approaching stall. The ailerons, being located outside the separated flow, will tend to remain effective as the stalling sequence starts. All these factors give the most desirable kind of response to a stall, namely aileron effectiveness, nose drop, aerodynamic buffet, and absence of violent wing drop. Despite these advantages, for large jet transport aircraft, a rectangular wing platform would impose unacceptable bending moments and would be less efficient at higher speeds. Compared to a rectangular wing, a tapered wing creates lower bending moments for a given span and is more efficient. The airflow separation on a tapered wing happens first in the area of the wing tips, reducing lift on the outboard part of the wing. This is because the weak wing tip vortices allow separation earlier than the inboard part of the wing, where the stronger vortices from the wider cord reduce the effective angle of attack. If an actual basic tapered wing were allowed to stall in this way, the stall would create aileron buffet and perhaps a violent wing drop, which greatly increases the likelihood of entering a spin. In addition, there would be no buffet at the tailplane, no strong nose down pitching moment, and very little, if any, aileron effectiveness. To counter these undesirable characteristics, a tapered wing must be modified using one or more of the aerodynamic features described next. The wing can be designed with a twist which reduces the angle of incidence, the angle between the mean cord line and the fuselage datum line towards the tip. This is known as washout and decreases the angle of attack at the tip relative to the root and the root will tend to stall first. Another method is to vary the aerofoil section across the span so that the sections near the tip have greater thickness, greater camber or both. The higher CL max of such sections delays the stall at the tips. Leading edge slots at the wing tips re-energize the boundary layer by increasing its kinetic energy. The result is an increased CL max, delaying separation at the tips and retaining aileron effectiveness. The function of slats and slots is fully described in the lesson on high lift devices. The stall pattern can be influenced by forcing it to start from the root. This could be managed by designing the wing with a smaller leading edge radius at the root but this is less efficient overall. The desired result can be achieved by fitting small wedge-shaped strips, stall strips, to the leading edge, which promote separation at high angles of attack, but will not affect the efficiency of the wing at cruising speed. Vortex generators, another device that can re-energize the boundary layer, consist of rows of small thin blades about two and a half centimeters high, set at a small angle and projecting vertically into the airstream to produce vortices over the upper wing surface. They each generate a small vortex, which causes the free stream flow of high energy air to mix with and add kinetic energy to the boundary layer, delaying separation. A swept wing will allow higher maximum speed, but has a greater tendency than a straight wing to stall first near the tips. 
This loss of lift at the tips moves the center of pressure forward and inward, giving a destabilizing nose-up pitching moment. The lift is now concentrated inboard, and the maximum downwash impinges on the tailplane, adding to the nose-up moment. As soon as a swept wing begins to stall, both the forward CP movement and the increased downwash at the tailplane causes the nose to rise rapidly, further increasing the angle of attack. This is obviously undesirable and unacceptable behaviour at the stall, and can result in a complete loss of control in pitch from which it may be very difficult, if not impossible, to recover. This phenomenon is known as pitch up, and is a very dangerous characteristic of some high-speed swept wing aircraft. The tendency of a swept back wing to tip stall is due to the induced spanwise flow of the boundary layer from root to tip, and there are several design features that can be incorporated to redress this effect to give more acceptable stall properties. Wing fences are thin upright metal strips which generally extend from leading to trailing edge and restrict the outward drift of the boundary layer. Vortilons are similar to wing fences, but are shorter and mounted under the wing leading edge. The support pylons of pod-mounted engines act in the same way, which is to create a small but intense vortex over the wing's upper surface at high angles of attack to form an aerodynamic wing fence. Finally, there is a feature rarely used on modern high-speed jet transports, but which did appear on earlier generation jets, such as the Comet Airliner and the Hunter. The sawtooth leading edge, like the Vortilon and Pylon, also produces a vortex at high angles of attack to act as a wing fence.